I never played Portal, but the core mechanic of the game is pretty mind-bending, so I decided to implement it myself. I know this topic has been done to death on YouTube, but this is a new method. I'm thinking different here. My technique uses ray tracing, and I've found it to be much more general and mathematically elegant than the old method that the Portal devs used. I know this because I also did it the old way a few years ago with pretty subpar results. Like most games, the old method uses a rendering algorithm called rasterization. I didn't know what a GPU was back then, so I wrote the rasterizer from scratch in processing, with some of the worst shadow maps in history. To explain this, we're going to need the magic of screen sharing, which is a bit of a trip on its own, as you can see here. To make these portals work, we render the scene from two different cameras, the one I'm filming on and the pink iPhone. Then we project one of the images onto the portal, which is where the screen sharing comes in. Here my Mac represents the portal. This isn't going to work if the portals are facing each other. In that case, we have to recursively generate many new cameras with different positions, clipping planes, and projection matrices, and figure out how to composite all of the images together. By the end of this video, you should see that it doesn't have to be this complicated. I used to imagine walking through a mirror into a reflected world where all the text is backwards and Zuko's scar is on the wrong side. Now I can, since this method can apply any linear transformation including a mirror transformation. All right, we can see that the octahedron here is on the left, and if we look through the portal, it's actually on the right. And we can go through the portal like that, and uh, now it's on the left. And the pyramid is also switched sides, so the entire world here has been mirrored. And if we go through again, we can go back to where we were. All right, so this portal here is straight, but, if we look at this one, this one is rotated by pi over 8 radians, and that means that all the light rays that pass through this portal also get rotated, which is why it looks like this. And it also means that if we go through the portal, we also get rotated. And, uh, we can keep going. Now we're about 45 degrees. And... Uh, upside down and if we uh, keep going we will eventually get back to where we started there we are and now we can go this way and this just rotates us in the opposite direction how about that this portal you can see that it's wider than uh, this one. And it's actually scaled on the x-axis, so every ray that passes through it also gets scaled on the x-axis. And if we go through it, we also get scaled on the x-axis. You can see that's looking wider. Yeah, that's pretty weird. And uh, for this portal, the opposite happens. It scales it down on the x-axis. So we can go through here a couple times, getting real skinny. And uh, yeah, it's messing up the uh, shading a bit here. Look at that. Let's get into the details. This is a custom game engine that I wrote in Swift and Metal that uses ray tracing natively. Check out my black hole video to learn more about that, but in short, we trace a bunch of rays from the camera and check to see if they intersect any of the objects in our scene. If a ray intersects a portal, 
we teleport that ray over to the other portal and repeat the process iteratively. But how do we teleport a ray? Let's start with a simpler example, teleporting a point. The game world has a global coordinate system that you can see on the bottom, and the blue and orange portals each have their own local coordinate systems, which can be represented by matrices. This green point can be represented by a vector in the global coordinate system, and by a different vector in the blue portal's local coordinate system. Note that these vectors have different components, but they still represent the same point. We can compute the second vector by multiplying the blue portal's matrix by the first vector, and we can compute the first vector by multiplying the second vector by the inverse of that matrix. Okay, now we can teleport. We make a new vector with the exact same components, but in the coordinate system of the orange portal, and this is our teleported point. It looks rotated, but that's because the orange portal is rotated. The X and Y components are still the same. But we need to express this point in terms of the global coordinate system. So we multiply the vector by the inverse of the orange portal's matrix. We need two points to define a line, and the same is true for a ray. So we must teleport two points to teleport a ray. And that's all there is to it.